Tom Connell in Port Moresby there. Well, there's growing opposition to the government's planned changes to laws governing financial advice, known as FOFA. National Seniors Australia, traditional allies of the coalition, has urged its 200,000 members to lodge objections to the changes. They were put in place after the GFC and the collapse of Storm Financial to protect you and the consumer, of course. But the government wants them to be scrapped to reduce red tape for financial institutions. This was formerly the task of the former Assistant Treasurer, Arthur Sinodinas, who stepped aside this week. Now it's up to Finance Minister Senator Matthias Cormann, who joins me now from Perth. Thanks for your time today. Will you mirror Senator Sinodinas's approach, or do you want to put your own stamp on these reforms? Well, uh, David, what we're doing and what uh, Senator Sinodinas was doing was uh, implement uh, the policies we took to the last election. Uh, Labor uh, in government uh, used the cover uh, of uh, things like the storm financial collapse to impose a whole range of changes that went uh, well beyond an attempt to prevent a future collapse of storm financial that essentially were all about uh, providing advantages in a competitive market for one segment of the financial services market, particularly close to labor, uh, namely uh, the uh, industry funds uh, segment. Uh, we are not proposing to make any changes uh, we're not proposing uh, to uh, reintroduce science commission uh, for personal advice. We're not proposing uh, to remove the best interest duty, as has been suggested. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there, which is uh, clearly uh, creating concern among people like uh, the National Seniors Association and CODA. Uh, what I will be doing uh, in the next uh, few days and weeks uh, is uh, I'll make sure that everybody is very clear on what we're actually uh, proposing to do, rather than what Labor is uh, dishonest honestly and inaccurately suggesting that we're doing. Why is though the government removing protections that were put in place to protect consumers? Well, I reject uh, that we're doing that. What we're doing is we're restoring some balance. Uh, I mean, the consumer interest, of course, involves uh, having appropriate levels of consumer protection, but also making sure that consumer can have uh, access, affordable access to high quality advice. Uh, so what we're setting out to do is to ensure that we've got the most efficient, the most transparent, and the most competitive uh, financial services system uh, available possible, where uh, consumers can access uh, high quality uh, and uh, high quality advice which is not conflicted uh, but of course we want to ensure that the regulatory framework uh, in place is competitively neutral not uh, favoring uh, one segment of the market against the other because ultimately consumers will benefit if there is robust competition not just between individual businesses but also between different business models and LIBOR sought to impose one business model across the whole of the market. Well, I just want to focus on, on the best interest test. You mentioned it briefly before. Uh, this is a, an area that, that, that you know, is important. There are reforms, are there not, to, uh, under your changes to this best interest test? Now, to, just to explain it to our viewers, uh, this is an area that would require, under Labor's laws, the, the financial advisors to work in the best interests of clients. Now, accountants, lawyers, doctors are all required by fiduciary standards to, to act in, in the client's best interests. So why not financial advisors? Well, uh, David, and this is where Labor is spreading misinformation. I mean, Section 961B of the relevant Future Fund Act uh, it provides that advisors need to act in the best interest of their client, uh, and we're keeping. Uh, that section. In fact, right from the outset, uh, when the Ripple inquiry uh, assessed the uh, implications from the storm financial collapse, we uh, as the coalition immediately supported uh, the introduction of a statutory best interest duty, which comes on top of uh, the fiduciary uh, duty under common law that uh, applies uh, to all uh, professionals in these sorts of circumstances in any event. We are not removing this. Uh, we think it is very important to prevent a, a collapse uh, like the one with Storm Financial, it's very important that financial advisors uh, are required to identify all of the facts when it comes uh, to a client's personal uh, circumstances and that the advice is tailored to their specific uh, circumstances and their specific uh, needs, which is something that didn't happen with uh, Storm Financial. With Storm Financial, people were given a very inappropriate product for uh, their particular circumstances, and, and, and that was, that was uh, completely inappropriate. It was very concerning, and it should never allow it to be happened uh, again. 
and we are not proposing to allow it to happen again. What we are saying uh, is uh, that where uh, Labor uh, provided a checklist on uh, what financial advisors must do to satisfy uh, the, the, the best interest duty, they added at the bottom of the checklist a catch-all provision, an open-ended catch-all provision, which said that they needed to do anything else that could be considered uh, reasonable. Um, now, that, that would have led to complete uh, a significant risk of open-ended litigation. Uh, it would have undermined the certainty of how the best interest duty uh, would operate, and it was not in the interest of consumers nor uh, their financial advisors. We want to have the best interest duty in place, but we want to improve how it operates. We want to make sure that it can operate with certainty for both uh, the clients of financial advisors and financial advisors themselves. Well, Seniors Australia, as I mentioned at the start of the program, is concerned about this and, and, and very much a, against it, it seems now. Uh, the, one of the big concerns they have is that commissions on general uh, advice uh, seem to be of the benefit of the banking sector and adverse to the interests of consumers. Won't your changes see more commissions for financial advisors actually come back? Uh, no, we're not uh, reintroducing and we're not proposing to reintroduce commissions uh, for personal advice. Uh, what we are doing is levelling the playing field. Uh, Bill Shorten and Labor, uh, when they were last in government, uh, made a special deal uh, with industry funds where they enabled industry funds to provide general advice and uh, limited personal advice under the uh, title of intra-fund advice. They allowed, this is Bill Shorten, allowed industry funds to charge for that advice. That uh, charge is not disclosed uh, to members. Uh, that charge is imposed irrespective of whether a fund member uh, seeks or receives that advice. And furthermore, Labor, uh, and this is the incredible bit, Labor gave industry funds an exemption from the opt-in requirements, the requirements for clients to re-sign with their advisor on a regular basis that applies to everybody else. They gave industry funds an exemption from that. And even further, um, people can't opt out uh, from uh, having to pay. Uh, for uh, those charges for intra-fund advice that can be charged uh, by industry funds. Now what we've said, if you're a product provider, if you're a bank and you've got an employee uh, that has got a customer in front of him, of course, um, of course he should be able to provide uh, general advice to that customer, to that bank customer. Of course uh, the bank should be able to incentivize its employees to provide uh, that general advice to their customers. I mean there can be no suggestion that somebody who walks into a bank and talks to a bank teller uh, about the bank's products uh, is somehow uh, in a similar level of uh, risk as uh, when you talk to uh, like a storm financial about investing your entire uh, retirement savings in something that is completely inappropriate to your circumstances. So I mean the Labour Party is deliberately uh, fudging things here. They're deliberately frightening people for political purposes. It is reckless and irresponsible uh, and uh, we will be setting out to ensure that people understand very clearly what we're actually doing as opposed to uh, what Labor is telling people we're doing. Okay, we'll, we'll just uh, don't have too much longer left. And I did want to ask you about the uh, the, the loss of Arthur Sinodinus, in particular from the Expenditure Review Committee ahead of the budget, uh, which is getting pretty close now. With his role now falling, of course, on you, it means that now you'll get advice from uh, finance, the Department of Finance and the Treasury, where, as I understand it, in the past it would have been split between that advice would have been split between you and Arthur Sinodinus. Does that create any, any problems for all of that advice from the two different departments uh, falling, falling on you? Well, I mean, the Treasurer, uh, Joe Hockey, of course, receives advice from uh, Treasury, as he has before and as he will now, and I will receive advice from uh, the Department of Finance, as I have before and as I will now. And uh, yes, I mean, we'll miss Arthur and we look forward uh, to his uh, speedy return. But let's be very clear, I mean, the Treasurer and I, together with the Prime Minister and all of the Ministers in the Cabinet, uh, have been working uh, for some time on the task of repairing the budget mess that we've inherited from our predecessors. Uh, and we're obviously getting uh, closer and closer to the budget now. Uh, and, uh, you know, everything is just business as usual. We'll continue to work methodically and uh, carefully uh, to repair uh, the budget mess that we've inherited from Labor. Finance Minister Matthias Cormann, thanks so much for that. Always good to be here.